discuss before midnight if you do not violate uh, uh, those laws nature itself will restore your vigor and your strength another thing you need is to trust in divine power you can we saw there up there uh, in the ministry of jesus he depended on divine power remember jesus is god himself but he depended on divine power when he was uh, uh, healing the people so we need to trust in divine power because god is the only one who can keep you through problems and trials of life uh, if you read in the book of james chapter 1 verse 5 we can, uh, the Bible is telling us that we should pray for wisdom. Wisdom. We should ask God for wisdom to clearly determine which remedies to use because there are so many remedies out there. And if somebody is confused, maybe sometimes you have a, a call, you don't even know which one, which one you are going to use. You should ask for wisdom, pray for wisdom that when you're using these remedies, that God may guide you. Remember, we saw that there are, those are poisonous and they are non poisonous, so you need. Uh, our wisdom. Uh, so let us get into our discussion for today, which is uh, remedies to use at home. And uh, these remedies, um, there are almost 11 remedies, and these are must have. Then, as a parent, these are the remedies that you must have at home. And number one is, is echinacea. Echinacea is known with maybe when you search, you can find some good black samson or red sunflower. And the part that is used uh, is actually uh, the root. Uh, most of the time here, we find it being sold as, as, as a powder form, like you can see in that picture. But for, for the picture there, that's our uh, echinacea. And Echinacea is at home. It's a powerful uh, blood cleanser. You can use it to your whole family, even in children, even in, in, in adults. Uh, you, need, you need it. You need it externally. Internally, it is used for bad breath. Fevers congestions and uh, skin diseases. Uh, like I said, it is used both in, uh, in adults and, 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 and in children. Uh, when you have blood poisoning, maybe yeah, when you have blood poisoning, this is the best remedy to use echinacea. Fevers in children, maybe sometimes children are just sick, you don't even know where the fever is coming from. This is a good remedy. It's a, a good remedy for also eczema. Many children are affected. You don't even know if it's the soaps you are using or where you're living. Young children, especially, they try to get these uh, diseases, the skin diseases. And you may end up moving from one hospital to another with no cure. And the cure is just here. It is given to us by God freely. Uh, it is also used for tonsillitis sores, infections, and wounds. Like I said, it's used both internally and, and externally. For externally, now it's for the for the wounds and uh, at sores, you have to like make a poultice, you mix with water, you make a paste, and then you apply on the affected area and, and cover. Uh, that way, it acts at, as an excellent antibiotic. And uh, actually, Ignatia, it ranks best with the golden seal and red clover. We are going to see what is golden seal and the red clover as we go on with our discussion. For sore throat, you can uh, combine with ma. We are going to see also what is ma. Uh, you just gargle and then uh, it will expel all the poison and toxins. Like I said, it is a powerful blood cleanser. It acts, uh, yes. Um, I can see Enoch is saying that you slide show your slides. We are not mentioning, but some you slide show your slides. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay now. 
Yeah, we are in uh, we are remedy number one, which is uh, echinacea. I had shown you the picture. You can see it there. It's a Netherland blood cleanser. Uh, I said it is powerful when combined with ma, and you are going to see what ma is. And when you combine it with ma, it's excellent for typhoid and and, and other fever. Uh, yes. Yes. Let me just go back to this uh, definition. It acts powerful to cleanse the morbid matter from the stomach and to expel poison, toxin, pus, or abscess formation. That's why you're saying it is very good for even the bites when you have maybe snake bites of uh, sting from poisonous plants or or uh, insects this is very good you have to take it in because it's a blood cleanser you take it in and then maybe for the poultice you can use other uh, things that expel poison like activated charcoal maybe let's say you have um, a bite maybe an insect bite you can prepare tea using echinacea you just you don't have to boil the echinacea itself you just have to boil the water and then you dip it inside you steep it inside uh, for 20 minutes and then now you drink with the tea that's how you use it internally and for externally you, you can just uh, put a little water and then you make a paste and apply the in the in the affected areas but i prefer you use it internally mostly or you can use both internally and externally especially if you have boils you know, or or snake bites and uh, even wounds when you have a wound you can you can uh, drink it internally and use it externally to treat uh, wounds so echinacea is a must have in every household and for the children maybe for, for an adult you can drink a whole cup but for for a child maybe less than a year you can give with a spoon if depending on how your child will travel it is not it is not bitter and it is not sweet it is just there in the middle so uh, and it has no side effect it's not like the other the other medicine where you take from hospital and then you hear you, this one has no side effect god's medicines they have no side effect and uh, number two we are going to look at fennel fennel uh, goes with other names like wild fennel or sweet fennel and the part that is used are the seeds and the leaves of, uh, of uh, the fennel. Uh, fennel is one of is an old rub household remedy and is also used for culinary herb. Most of the, those, those uh, spices you buy, you can see they usually say they have fennel. And it is also used for flavoring foods and flavoring other medicine. Um, if your child wakes up with those things in the eyes, the eyes they are ever like they have problems with their eyes. When they wake up in the morning, they can't even see because of the white things in the eyes. You can make fennel tea. Maybe you soak the seeds, or if it is in the powder form, you soak it in what you steep it in water for 20 minutes, and then you use it to wash the eyes. Yes, you use it to, to wash the eyes or to wipe the eyes. And uh, fennel is one of the oldest remedies that have been used for gas, acid stomach, gout, cramps and colic especially when you have a young child and they are crying the whole night because of colic fennel uh, is good uh, for a child for a newborn maybe zero to six months it is not recommended that you give the child but the mother can take the tea themselves they soak the fennel in water and then they drink the water that way will prevent the child from getting a stomach acid then from getting a colic if a child is older than six months then you can give with a with a spoon uh, like i said temperance everything is in moderation uh, ground fennel can also be sp sprinkled or in food to prevent stomach stomach gas and, and bowel issues that now this is for a child who's already feeding it's not for a child who's breastfeeding 
taking the tea yourself and then the child will breastfeed. But for a child who is eating and they have a problem with uh, the stomach and the bowel, so you can sprinkle it in their food. I've already mentioned that it's an excellent remedy for colic in, uh, in small children. That's how fennel looks like. These are the leaves. I mean, the flowers and the seeds. So they are available in seeds form and also in powder form. It depends on your preference. You can take the seeds, you ground them yourself, or you can take the seeds and soak them in hot water for 20 minutes and then take the tea. Uh, for this fennel, it should be steeped and given in small doses every half hour until the infant or the child is relieved. Now I'm talking about the gas issue, the stomach gas issue. You should give it in small doses every half an hour until you see now your child uh, is, is relieved. Uh, also, this fennel seed, when you ground them in powder, you can use it to treat food poisoning, insect bites, and also uh, snake bites, like I said. Also, we saw that Echinacea is also used in snake bites, insect bites, but this has another advantage to use yeah, in food poisoning. It is like another another herb that can be used in food poisoning is activated charcoal. But if you don't have access to activated charcoal, you can also use the fennel seed. You soak them in water, or if it is a powder, you soak it in water and take the tea. Uh, it is also good in cases of jaundice. When the liver is obstructed, most of the time you take your child to hospital and they are told they have jaundice. And maybe you're told you're good to go through phototherapy. And those who have gone through it, you know, it is not cheap. Uh, and you can prevent this jaundice by giving or taking the fennel yourself when you're breastfeeding. And give Uh, uh, that means you should only go to hospital for doing this for extreme cases. But when you have these remedies, you can. There are some things you can uh, prevent. Also, fennel comes in form of oil. It, and it can also be added to gargles for hoarseness. Maybe you have lost your voice. You can use uh, fennel, fennel oil for hoarseness and uh, so you just need to, to gargle. It is also available in capsule or powder form, but here I prefer you use it in seed form or in oil form for the purpose of rubbing in uh, joints to relieve a joint pain. Number three, a must have herb, especially in your garden, is the aloes. The aloes, they are Several, you have Zanzibar aloes, you have Bombay aloes, any, any family of or any species of aloe vera. And what we use is uh, they are the leaves, and uh, we just soak them in water, or we just take the gel and we soak in water. And they are used both internally and externally, especially for burns. If your child ha has a, maybe playing near the fire and they got burned, you need to get the gel and apply it, it will bring a soothing effect and killing also. Other one is skin, skin irritation, maybe from insect bites. Uh, you, you can apply it, you can apply the gel. Also, it used to treat wounds. If your child has a wound, you can use it, you can apply it. Uh, internally, it is used for chronic constipation and hyperacidity. If you are experiencing hyperacidity or, or your child is experiencing hyperacidity or chronic constipation, you can give them uh, the aloe vera. Uh, we can see here it is one of the most healing agencies we have among the herbs. When I was a child, we, we, we used to get sick, any type of disease, be it malaria, typhoid, uh, stomachache, headache, everything. We, my mother just used to take aloe vera base. She soak it in water and then you drink the water. Maybe sometimes you may sweeten it with honey because for young children it is too bitter. Uh, also, this aloe vera is used to expel pinworms. Maybe you have this, you have 
you have noticed that your child has been one you can use it after several doses not one dose after several doses uh, and it is one of the herbs you have for the best for colon as a colon cleanser uh, we can see aloe vera as i mentioned severally in the bible you can see those bible verses there in numbers 24 verse 6 it is also mentioned in psalms 45 verse 8 proverbs 7 verse 17 and song of solomon 4 verse 14 and john 19 verse 39 you see it is clearly mentioned in the bible so it is a valuable a hub that you should have in your garden every household should have at least a plant an aloe vera whichever whichever species that you will get uh we are still on aloe vera it places the morbid matter from the stomach liver kidney spleens and blood and uh, like i said before it is the finest colon cleanser ever known it can also be used in case where a laxative is needed for like chronic constipation and you need to use a laxative you can use uh, aloe vera uh, it does not gripe and it is very healing and soothing to the stomach and the rest of the body when you take aloe vera you just take a few hours and you feel better even when you're having malaria you just need to take aloe vera and you will feel better i already talked about this externally you use it for cut and burns in the woods and you just apply the gel you cut the gel and apply the gel uh, for taking internally you just to need to soak it in water and then you strain and use uh, that water number four hub you must have is called uh, bitter root it also goes by the name milkweed and the part that is used uh, is a uh, is a root as you can see in the picture milkweed it, it, it is a uh, it produces milk when 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 you cut it produces uh, milk so you can search more about it bitter root of uh, milkweed this how the flowers look like but i'm saying we don't use the flowers the part that we use here yeah, is the root it is a good remedy for intermediate fever typhoid fever and other fevers you know when you have a young child fevers they are frequent and so when you have bitter root you, it can solve all your problems and it is also excellent for poor digestion it expels worms uh, it's also valuable in gallstones maybe but not so much in children and also good in rheumatism and wonderful for diabetes but i know maybe most of the people will, will use it for diabetes in combination with these uh, other herbs number five i'm trying to go fast because i can see our time is up uh number five is a cayenne pepper the part the part that we use is uh, the fruit this is how cayenne looks like uh, you can use uh, cayenne pepper in open wounds because uh, what it does when you when you apply it maybe in the wounds of in a part where you see you have a joint pain or inflammation cayenne attracts blood to that part and you know blood is the one that brings the, the healing so when it attracts blood it will attract healing um, and, and it's also good for colds uh, for children if your child can tolerate it you can soak it if your child has a wound maybe you, you treat the wounds using uh, cayenne and cayenne also help in uh, preventing excessive bleeding yes that's on cayenne another hub we use is that the red seed we also have the flaxseed oil we have also the flaxseed powder uh, this is how they look like flax seeds Uh, flax seeds they are very good when you use uh, poultices 
for for boils and sores the mouth sores or the gum sores you can just uh, grind the the flaxseeds and apply you make a paste and apply in the affected areas internally flaxseed is used to treat asthma bronchitis constipation coughs uh, stomach ulcers lung and and uh, chest problems and it is even mixed with charcoal for external use for those uh, uh, poultices you can mix it with uh, give it a charcoal now we come to golden seal golden seal the part that is used is the root and this one actually we describe it as the king of all herbs if we have the maybe if we have discussed about the queen of all herbs now golden seal is the king of all herbs because uh, this is how it looks like uh, golden seal it, it is described as heal all and heal all diseases when you have a uh, golden seal in your house you don't have to worry about anything uh, internally it is used for gum infections it is used for measles sores uh, morning sickness chicken pox bladder disease and tonsillity as i said it's the king of all herbs it is used for all digestion problem even scarlet scarlet fever and smallpox so when you have it at home and maybe your child is sick and you don't know where they are sick you just need to uh, make tea and you just um, soak it in hot water and then you give them and everything will be will, will, will be okay and and for tonsillitis it is good when you mix with a little bit of ma and cayenne you can mix golden seal with cayenne and ma to treat uh, tonsillitis now we've been talking about ma 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 now we come to ma uh, i want us to read in the book of matthew chapter 2 verse 11 we saw the wise men bringing gifts uh, to jesus and one of the things that they brought to jesus was ma let me ask yourself why did they bring ma to jesus because it is powerful it, and it works best when, when combined with uh, golden seal uh, when you have a child ma should not lack in your house no? because it treats bad breath asthma coughs brush bleeding gums and also even externally it is used to treat wounds and skin diseases and even uh cankers these are like sores in the in the, in, in the mouth so that is ma but but this was just by the way we have not finished with the golden seal golden seal as i said how we use you steep it in water and for 20 minutes you let it settle then you take it for children you can give with tablespoons and for you you can just drink maybe a whole cup uh, there's one in here that uh, we should not take too much of golden seal because it is too strong so when you're taking it you take it in moderation because it is, it is uh, too strong also we should not use it during pregnancy or continuously for a long time without a period of rest maybe you should not take golden seal for like two weeks without a rest maybe you should take it for five days and then you give it a rest and uh, for children you should give less doses according to their age if a child is too young maybe you give one tablespoon if a child is from five years and above you can give two tablespoons and remember you should not use it continuously for a long time because it is actually very strong another herb that you should not like in your house is called red clover the part that we use are the flowers this is how flowers look like but we can find red clover in form of a powder uh, red clover is one of the great, great greatest blessings to purify uh, Red clover is good for cancer of any part. And it's been effective for 
uh, bronchial troubles and uh, even fresh wounds you can as well use it uh, for fresh wound so i'm getting communication that i should stop here for today and continue next time i hope that one is okay with everyone Yes, we have to stop there for today because of our time. So we will continue. We had prepared like 11 herbs that you must have at home. So I think we'll continue next uh, Thursday. Sir? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Kela. I... I don't know if anybody has a question or a comment before we wind up. We shall continue next week with the same, so worry not. Uh, thank you so much, Osea. I'm grateful. My name is Faith Wasike. I have a newborn. She's just a month, she's a month old uh, tomorrow. And I'm glad that for the information that you've given to us. The question that I'm asking, is there any of us who are selling those herbs? Because we, I, I know most of the verbs, um, herbs, except I think one. But now where to source them? There used to be a guy, a medical missionary, who used to uh, bring it to us here in Eldred. But it's been a while since I heard from him. So I don't know if there's, um, I don't know if there's anyone who's selling them, number one. Number two. Also, my, my, my baby has very bad colic, and sometimes and, and at least some, and, and she can only get relieved after um, diarrhea. So I'm, uh, uh, Osea told me about some of those remedies, and I'm trying. What else can I do for the moment? Because it's really, really stressing me up. She doesn't sleep. She's up the whole night. That means I'm up the whole night as well. Thank you. Maybe I'll begin with the first question. You can, uh, I think the only person I know who sells those herbs is uh, Elder Hussein. Maybe you can, Elder Hussein, maybe you will share your information. Uh, for the colleague, I hope you've been drinking the tea that I've just said, like you soak the fennel seed. You can also try the fenugreek seed and the dill seed. You soak them in water and you take the water yourself. Like I said, in extreme cases, that's when you can give the child. But for the moment, I can recommend that you try taking the tea yourself and you see if it will improve. And also uh, try burping the child to remove excess gas uh, in the stomach. So I hope this helps. If it doesn't, maybe you can talk to Elder Osea. He will explain to you in those extreme cases, when you're supposed to be giving the child uh, the fennel seed when they are soaked. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate. Thank you. Welcome. Anyone else? Yeah, thank you. Thank comment you. Or thank question? you very, very much for the wonderful. information the day and night a dry cough and i've tried using a remedy that i have just taking an uh, onion putting uh, the legs the socks and uh, breastfeeding her may uh frequent times and i still okay it has helped but i'm still worried what else can i do and yet i don't have the the remedies that you have told us today thank you Uh, 
you said you're using the onion are you putting the onion in there as well yes and there are still puffins yes yes since you are a child who is too young i'm not recommend you to be giving them any of the herbs maybe you can continue using the the red onion you put it in the sauce and also as you're going to sleep maybe you cut a few and put them around the bed that onion will absorb all the toxins that is in the room and uh, also there's another remedy you can use uh, but this one is usually for the cows. I'm not sure. Your child, does she have any other symptom like fever or colds or chills? Uh, she doesn't have fever, only cough. Uh, so you, you can try uh, uh, the onions in the, if, if, if it persists, you can make uh, the onion syrup. The onion syrup, is that you take honey, pure honey. If you have pure honey, that one from the rural areas, not the one that is sold in supermarkets. If you have that pure honey, Oscar, you have something? Yeah, actually I wanted to, what's what you are saying, explain, just explain and finish uh, first before I say something. Okay, you take a, a container with a lid where you can close it tightly. Then you cut onions in rounds. You put the first layer of onions, and then you put you cover it with uh, honey. You put another layer of onions. You cover it with honey. You, re you repeat the same process until now your container is full, and then you, you cover it tightly. You put it somewhere. Uh, maybe after 12 hours, you can give your child with a syrup. That is you should let the onion soak in that honey for three days and then you can remove now the onion you'll be using that uh syrup to do your chicken do you have anything else to add to that uh actually like you have explained it uh and it's not that uh, uh, babies cannot take herbs they can after all when you go to hospital they are given medication which is far much stronger than the the herbs. Uh, so you have you have to be careful and also know the amounts to give. But for this child with a a cough, I will say just the honey syrup, like you have been told. The book of Isaiah, I believe, chapter seven, verse fifteen, in Asema, concerning Jesus Christ, that butter and honey shall he eat. So meaning that children can take honey. So make the syrup. If you have honey in the house right now, please uh, make that onion syrup. And by morning, it should be ready when you give the child. The other thing you can do is uh, do, do a cold compress around uh, the neck region. Just uh, take something cold, like a handkerchief, put it in cold water, then tie it around the neck, then cover on top with a... Uh, with, um, a dry, dry towel, not not so tight, just loosely. Yeah, it kinda brings circulation to that to that area. So you can do that right now for the baby. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. I can see Ongaki Eric also wanted to contribute to the question. Welcome, Eric. Hello, I'd like to contribute on uh, the one who was saying a persistent cough. Uh, we had this case uh, when our kid, our child was uh, about seven month, uh, months old and it was so persistent. So I tried the onion syrup, it didn't work. I tried the compresses, it didn't work. Um, we were fearful that the child could have caught uh, who off because we did not do vaccination but one thing that uh, worked uh, that I, I tried out is uh, using eucalyptus 
oil to together with the the honey Peppermint. pure honey you get pure honey like a half a cup and for a very young child from one month to six months you use about uh, seven to ten drops seven will be safer you do it seven drops in that uh, half a cup half a cup that's around 100 ml so when you do that you put the honey first in in a, in a boiling uh, material preferably a still sphere when it has, it is boiling now you add the drops for, from the essential oil dropper the, you let it cool you cover it then after boiling for a while you let it cool after it, it has cooled you start by giving like a uh, half a teaspoon if you go to the chemist they have these uh uh you can talk with the person who is selling at the, at the chemist they can help you with uh these measuring spoons from one of the dawas or uh, the, the drugs they have there there is one for 2.5 ml there is another one for uh uh 5 5 ml so you you use half of the 2.5 uh, because the child is a bit younger. I, I, I'd suggest that, but that can come or if the, the other means that have been already given, if they are not working. On uh, um, Mrs. Wasike, uh, colleague, I'd like to ask whether she can have the following in consideration, uh, especially the vaccines which are given almost immediately after birth, Okay, that uh, that could be a, a a deeper talk on the same. But uh, what can be used as uh, Elder Osei had shared that uh, herbs can be given to children. One of the herbs which is very tender for kids, which can be done like an enema. You can remember how in the old days the grandmothers used to like uh, take a syringe and put some herbs inside, and then they feed. They put they they give an enema to the child then you give it for uh, as an enema to the child that's what i can suggest at at the moment not I love what, it. what's tea sorry come again what's tea i didn't get the name of the tea catnip 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 Okay. Yep. It's in the chats. Just check. Okay. The yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. That's I've I've suggested that, but uh, it's always the principle. The first principle is to ascertain the cost. So probably that one will require a detailed uh, info on what or any investigation on what uh, what may may be causing that extreme colic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. I hope any of you have been answered. Uh, no? Okay, okay, he says he lost his voice. I hope you have been answered. So that remedy has been given by Eric, and there is also that one I had explained of uh, the honey syrup. And just to add on what Eric has said, that uh, catnip actually, they call it the children's hub because it's wonderful for children and infants. When they have actually the gas, uh, stomach cramps, and nervousness. Because uh, Faye, you said your child has been crying the whole night, maybe catnip will work. Because maybe it's not even colic, it's nervousness, and catnip will solve all those problems. Thank you. Thank you. So, because of time, we are going to stop there. We are going to continue next Thursday. And for those who are asking for the slide, I'll share them next Thursday, so be sure to come back. I'll share them after the presentation, and maybe it will be a blessing to you, to your family, and to the people you live around. So I hope it's in order that we pray and end it at uh, this hour. So let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we are grateful for this hour. We are grateful for learning from your feet. Lord, we pray that you are going to use these remedies to cure all the diseases. Let us, Lord, when we come back for a second time, you find us that there will be no one feeble person amongst us. 
just like Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, and there was not even one feeble man. It is our prayer, O Lord, that we may stay healthy, that you may guide us even in our diets, even in the places we live, that we may get uh, fresh air, we get sunlight, breathing that you give to us, Lord, as gifts, and we pray that you give us knowledge and understanding when we are using these uh, remedies, that we may use everything for the glory and honor of your name. Lord, even for each and everyone who is here, may you guide them, may you protect them. As they are going to use this knowledge, Lord, may you be with them, using the Holy Spirit to be amongst them. And above all, Lord, may your will be done for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good night. Okay. Angel, Angela, before you go. Yes. Um, I'm writing my number in the chat. Just uh, kindly text me. Okay. <laughs>